All right, what up, guys? So I have changed the build a little bit, the Crushing Hands build, and I figured I would release another, like, somewhat in-depth guide on how the build works and the different changes that I've made. It'll be, like, vaguely fem like similar to the other build, but I've changed at least five things that I would deem to be somewhat important. So we're going to go ahead and just make another video, because why not? Um, but anyway, let's get into it. We're going to start with the equipment. Now, I know I said let's start with equipment, but I always forget to do the mercenaries at the end of pit pushes and in my last build guide video because it just slipped my mind. So let's start with the mercenary here. We do you use right here, obviously, the guy that you start with is the best one. And then we go to uh, Rare's Guard, down to Crater, and then down to Iron Wolf's Call. This is what gives our armor, like we're literally 1,003 armor right now. Um, if you wanted to, you could possibly like get rid of this and add this but then you would the only one that's really um great is inspiration which is actually really really good but 15 percent resistance to all elements in my opinion is not as good as 15 percent armor because you get a like what i have on my boots now um we haven't gotten there yet but a ga resistance to all elements then it's greater than this and this will add about as much as a ga armor roll wood on boots so we go this direction because this one's harder to achieve um but anyway raider's guard then a crater and then iron wolf's call iron wolf's call is really good because it i am not 100 percent sure on this but i'm like 99.9 percent .9 sure where it says that you deal 25 percent increased damage and cost no resource the cost no resource is almost like getting the um what is it the the one that makes it where your skills cost no resource, the uh, shrine. Um, and you just do an absolute crap ton of damage with um, Capella Cake. But anyway. And then this right here is really good too, Crater, because it pulls enemies in. So it's in our higher pit pushes since we're not running uh, Vortex. It kind of acts like a pseudo Vortex for a short period of time. Right? Because he hits the ground three times and each burst deals damage and they pull in enemies. And they won't pull them into you, they pull them into him. But like if you see them get grouped up, there you go. But like I said, if you found a way to make your armor capped and you could get this and get GA on your boots, you'd be better off for that. Now, as far as the gear goes, the boots are the only thing that have changed from the last video. Um, if you've watched that, you can possibly skip through this part. We'll start with the boots just for you guys. We have changed from these boots here, which are uh, ignore the master working on them because, oh my god, it's horrible. Um, but it, it was dex, max life, and then armor where movement speed is. These are now my speed farming boots, which we'll get into in a second. Um, we changed to dex, max life, and resistance to all elements. Barrier generation, it, I just haven't rerolled these. That should also be on a max life, so triple max life would be the best you could get. But we for speed farming, I recommend you take boots that look like this. You just want movement speed, double movement speed to move around fast and vortex size, and then turbulence on them. So we don't run apprehension because we're just killing stuff that's really low and turbulence will let us use vortex and vortex will pull in the enemies and yeah i mean kind of self-explanatory but this is the what we the change we make for our speed farm build and just so you guys know we haven't got here yet but we take two points out of follow through and put them here and then boom there we go but now for those of you that didn't watch last video let's get into the gear um duelist on the helmet the ferocity uh, being plus five if you have only plus four that's fine as well it doesn't really add any damage it just adds attack speed so that we can proc our spirit hall faster which our spirit hall is jaguar and gorilla i know that people that do planes power add another jaguar here to get their max um ferocity up by one because planes power adds damage per stack of ferocity but for this build we don't do that um, but it lets us get to this faster this is bugged as most people know it double dips damage and that's what really causes us to do, like, a trillion damage type of thing. And most of the time, you're doing, like, 50 billion to 100 billion, somewhere in that range. And then you'll just, like, proc that. And it'll double dip, and you'll hit everything perfectly fine, and then just hit, like, a trillion damage, you know? Anyway. Um, and then Dex, Max Life, Max Resource, Barrier Gen, and Resilient. Um, I just haven't been bothered to try to triple roll this, and I've been preoccupied with my staff. But all your points into Resilient would be where it's at. And then obviously Shroud of False Death, like every build uses, with a triple GA on Max Life. And then we run Pock and Q to get our uh, 
barrier the rest of the way. Unlike Quill Volley, where we're running Crushing Hands, we don't have to have as much barrier gen. So that's nice. Um, the resource gen on this is also really nice. I know every Shroud has that, but that's been like really nice for this build. Um, which one is Pock again? Spend 300% of your maximum resource. That's three hits. You'll, you get this like it's nothing. Um, on to the Gauntlets. We have Moonrise on the Gauntlets. We have max life attack speed, crushing hand. You could also substitute attack speed with resource gen. You could probably also substitute crushing hand with resource gen. They're both going to do similar damage, in my opinion, doing the math. I know that it's not really an opinion. It's like, does it or doesn't it? But the way that the resource cost reduction works, if you had a GA roll, I think it would do fairly similar. Um, but also, I don't expect people to try to get their the best of the best gear. So if you get something with resource gen, that will work too. Uh, max life is the best you can get though. You need max life. Um, I have to change the freeze. That's just to help with crowds since we don't need uh, barrier gin on the gloves. And then Mystical, Cir Mystic Circle Potency. That is not best in slot for this build. We don't use Mystic Circle. But whenever I was experimenting, we had that's why Mystic Circle is on there because I, I did experiment with Plains Power. Um, and also flat damage doesn't do a whole lot, so it doesn't really matter that it's there. Having a hundred and something percent overpower damage isn't going to add that much damage, but that is technically the best in the slot with the overpower damage. And Moonrise, instead of Plains Power, if you math it out, I think you, you with a perfect roll on your ring and your gloves, Mystic, Mystic Circle Potency, you're somewhere between 6.9 and 7.1, 7 7.2% per stack of ferocity and i think that's going to math out to somewhere between i did the math in a previous video but unfortunately i already deleted the files off my pc but it's somewhere between like 89 and 92 or 93 percent damage um so if you have a good roll on moonrise it's just better and even if you can get your mystic circle potency high, where it gets a little bit higher than a hundred percent then us having two extra Stacks of resolve adds. Let's see. What we're at fifty-one percent, which I, the spirit halls I don't think actually take place in here, so this might not matter that much. No. Adding the extra resolve though gives us more damage to our crushing hands through this. Where it says for each stack of resolve you have, for each stack of resolve you have as your maximum, that number goes up. So that adds a little bit more damage as well. Oop, I'm over here fat fingering. On to the pants. Oh, also the attack speed from this is... Anyway. Pants, max life, armor, basic skills. Up to chance to mobilize. You don't have to have that. That's just left over from something else I was trying. Um, you could put barrier gen on there, but my barrier gen is perfectly fine without it. So it's just there. Um, it helps me whenever I'm just running around hitting enemies, it crowd controls them. And then the, uh, fact that they're crowd controlled makes them take more damage from my Paragon and stuff like that. Not that it really matters. I think I would kill them anyway in the open world or in like, uh, Infernal Hordes, but it's there. And then max resolve stacks. Obviously we want everything in a max resolve stacks, but I haven't gotten around to doing this. Because trying to hit three 25% chances in a row is absolutely just ugh. Um, we're working on the Rod of Capella K right now to do that. But anyway, and then obviously Interdiction on here. I haven't gotten a better roll of Interdiction. It's actually ridiculous. I have like 150 hours on this character this season. And do not have a, like an, at least an 11%. But anyway, Interdiction is still the best you can do. On to the boots, the non... Oh, wait, we already did the boots in the beginning of the video. Rod of Capelike. Obviously, at least GA max resource, it's going to be your best one, and you want 3%. That's just, like, the bare minimum. Um, I'm trying to get all three on a max resource. That's why right now it's only two out of three. I've probably tried... I've probably gotten to this point right here, where we're two out of three, like, a dozen times now, and just can't hit that last percentage. <laughs> That's why we're still on the Rod of Capelike. But max resource is your best go. And this is pretty much the thing that holds the whole build together. It's the reason we max out our Vigor. It's the reason that we want resource cost reduction. 
Um, there's a video by this guy, I can't remember his name, it's something Otter, explained why resource cost reduction is best, so that's why we have resource cost reduction on stuff. Um, not the best, but good. Um, your next best would be chance for core skills to hit twice, and then critical strike damage, and then velocity doesn't matter. On to amulet. Um, having GA on all of these is fantastic, but max life is the best one, obviously, since the viscous shield is bugged. Um, and then uh, having your apex as high as possible. I got a triple roll on this, but I'm going to try to get one that's got GA on attack speed core skills, at least, and overpower would be nice. And maintain 60%. It's going to cost me an absolute fortune. But I'm going to try to get it. And then I'm going to have to try to triple hit max life again. I may or may not do that. Um, everything else is kind of more of a priority for me. But anyway. Um, and Ring of the Midnight Sun. Having a G on dexterity is the best. And then it doesn't really matter after that. Critical strike damage would be nice. Cooldown reduction not so much because it doesn't really matter. Um, and Mirage definitely doesn't matter. And then having as high... To as close to 50% as possible is your best bet. And then lastly, on this ring, we have Redirected Force, of course, to work with um, Interdiction to give us a ton of damage. Um, max Life, Attack Speed, Resource Cost Reduction, Resource Cost Reduction, and then technically Overpower Damage is best, but the Mystic Circle Potency thing I explained like it was on the gloves. Um, and then having a resistance that's not poison or lightning is your best bet if you're trying to get as close to max resistance as possible, like I am right now. <clears throat> um, and then everything on to max life up, of course. Now let's move on to the skills. Basic skill, doesn't matter. We just need two points into this good down of our core skills. As many points into crushing hand as we can get. And then up to rampant crushing hand, which is the one that's going to make us do extra damage per stack of resolve. Um, this right here's one of the reasons that Moonrise is definitely just better, in my opinion. I'm pretty sure the math agrees with my opinion. Because even, even if you did a little bit more damage with Plains Power, the extra attack speed that Moonrise gives you is absolutely insane. So, And that gets you closer to double dipping your Jaguar Spirit Hall. So, um, And then on that, we have three points in the follow through. This is the one that's like malleable. We can take it and put it somewhere else if we want to. Um, because getting... 8% increased damage. I don't think it... The thing where it says doubled for third cast. Third cast doesn't mean every three casts. It actually matters for this stuff up here. Where it says your third attack strikes enemies around you. Your third attack does this, that, and the other. Um, but it does give us the 8% damage no matter what. So we do have points in there. But it is the one where we can take it out. And it's really not going to matter that much. Um, one point in a vigorous. And then up here to balance exertion. Actually, I think I have three points. In, yeah, I have three points in a vigorous. My bad. Just because it gives you that course uh, that vigor generation that's right um sorry but three points into vigorous three points into balance exertion uh, sorry i have to keep pausing recording i'm a little under the weather today so i just got like a cough and like dry mouth and stuff like that so just that's why it's cutting out a lot but anyway then we have one point into sword to get to replenishing sword this is our source of making enemies vulnerable we used to run the lucky hit chance on the ring but that just takes up a slot and two seconds and the hit that you make them vulnerable doesn't even count as a vulnerable hit. It's just not worth. We're not a lucky hit chance build either. So yeah, we just go with um, using the sore method. And then we have one point into focal point just to get up here to apex to get increased damage to vulnerable enemies and double that against elites. Mm, diminishment doesn't matter. It seems like it would be because your damage... It, it, Getting damage reduction against vulnerable in, or from vulnerable enemies sounds nice, but we have enough like flat damage reduction for it to not matter too much to have this. Um, then we have one point in a mirage and up into unrestrained power. We're constantly unstoppable because of the uh, gorilla spirit hall, so we don't have like we don't need anything in. Uh, if we use an ultimate, we're unstoppable too because if we have one point into everything from the shroud of false death, but. Um, we're constantly unstoppable from the Gorilla Spirit Hall. And then, obviously, Ravager. This is what gives us our most of our Vigor generation and lets us like bounce around a bunch of enemies and just kind of speed farm that way. And it increases your ferocity by two, which is nice. And we come down here. One point into Endurance, just to get up to Perseverance, where we get uh, damage reduction per stack of Resolve. Um, some people don't run this, but I like having... The, this is what I meant, like we have plenty of damage reduction without it. We have 19 stacks of resolve, so we have almost 40% damage reduction from this. It's fine, you know? 
one point armored hide and then up to reinforced armored hide where our block damage reduction is increased. I know that a lot of people run as many points into this as they can get. I'd rather I have other places I'd rather put those points and I only use it. I know that it makes sense to stop when we gain 100% block chance um, while it's active, but we reset our cooldown so frequently that having like a couple of seconds without this isn't a huge deal because activating it gives us our max resolve and getting an extra second for four points just really isn't worth it in my opinion. Um, counterattack down to reinforced counterattack because of our ring we have this as a passive. And then scourge down to reinforced scourge this is what gives us feared on our enemies and then of course um, each time you hit an enemy with scourge you gain 1% increased damage up to 50%. Um, on crowd controlled enemies, which is absolutely massive, even if you don't have apprehension on your boots, just because we have like the stuff that crowd controls enemies, like the freeze and the mobilize, this makes us do so much damage, so it's still worth popping Scourge even without apprehension on it. Now we have as many points as we get into Resilient, which is just three, obviously. Um, casting a Gorilla Skill gives you 45% multiplicative increased maximum life for 10 seconds. This is absolutely massive because of the Viscous Shield bug. Every 1% of your life while at max barrier, or sorry, every 12 HP you have while at max barrier grants you about 1% uh, increased damage. So when you have 30,000 life in a max barrier, like, do the math, you know. Um, and then we have one point in the dominant. We can obviously take this out because the trial gives us it, gives us damage. Sorry, gives us one point into it. But um, because of the revealing on our Paragon, which we haven't gotten to yet, we will knock down enemies. So we do do some increased enemies to knock or damage to knockdown enemies. Sorry, English is hard. Um, and then obviously potent in furnace because we have jaguar skills because of the spirit hall. Um, the traditional getting three points into this line here, and then we have four points into the hunter. We could you could take one more out to put it somewhere else if you wanted to, um, but this gives us better cooldown reduction. And then obviously down to exalted hunter. And then lastly, Prodigy's Tempo, because Rod of Capelike makes, them, makes it a core and a basic skill, so then all of our skills get increased ranks, and then all of our active cooldowns get increased by 10%, get decreased by 10%, increased by 2% for each of their skill ranks. Easy peasy. Now on to the Paragon. Um, I'll point out some places where if you guys aren't quite at my Paragon level that you can take points out to make up for it. Um, but we're, but I'm obviously going to show the ones that I have in it. I'm Paragon 267 right now, so 295 points spent. Um, but anyway, let's get into it here. Um, coming up through here, obviously, we grab this max life stuff. Um, grabbing this damage coming up through here. Grabbing all of the strength nodes except for this one. Um, and we have Colossal in here. And what's new here is we've grabbed these armor nodes right here. Come up through here. And then we have Viscous Shield. The Holy Viscous Shield that is bugged right now and gives us most of our damage. Um, and we have Headhunter in here. Most people don't run Headhunter, but I do because this has the easiest layout to grab the Dexterity nodes. Dexterity gives us extra damage, and it is a skill that double dips with the Jackwire skill, Spirit Hall. So a lot of stuff like this Critical Strike damage doesn't really dip into that as much um, with the double dipping aspect of it but Dexterity does. So we obviously have Headhunter in here for that. And then also getting an extra 10% increased damage to Elites and 10% increased damage overall is not bad either. That's 20% multiplicative damage plus the this double dipping and having it up lets us grab some of our other stuff. It's just the best that... I personally think it's the best for this board here. Um, we grab the damage while we have a barrier to get the dexterity and the damage while we have a barrier but it's not so important that we need to grab these we don't have these critical strike damages anymore our points were better allocated um going both directions here grabbing the barrier generation here and here this lets us not have to run it on all of our gear this is not barrier generation this is lucky hit chance but barrier generation here barrier generation here um and it lets us not have to put it as much on our gear, and we can run Dexterity in our armor instead of bear, instead of we can run Emeralds instead of Amethyst. English going right is going to give us the armor max life. Going left, we're going to get this damage reduction while vulnerable. Um, eventually, I will grab these two here, but the six percent is not a huge deal. But getting up here to get to this twelve percent is worth it right now. 
and then going going right towards this board this is the last board you want to add um because of everything that we got we will get all of these nodes here but the reason that this is also my first board is because getting even when it's your second board it wants a thousand decks so if it's your fourth board you're not gonna we're not gonna cap that so you don't want this to be the last board technically you could like run this one and then this one and you would still be fine but we just come out of the gate with this coming over to this way we have revealing and then we have spirit in here uh, we took off these two which will eventually get added back but this allowed us to grab some other stuff um, but we still have most of the dex notes here but this is flat damage that it adds so it's not a huge deal um, what matters the most is increased damage to elites and critical strikes increase the damage an enemy takes for you up to 15 percent um come down through here we have uh, attack speed here we want to grab as much attack speed as possible having this be your second board also i used to have this the last board i'm pretty sure and we weren't getting this 2.5 percent attack speed um bonus now that i've switched the boards around um it allows us to grab this and get that extra 2.5 percent which i know 2.5 percent is not a huge deal but we're trying to stack attack speed as much as possible because i don't even think with moonrise we're technically at our first cap i think we're at like 80 or 90 percent and then the ferocity being 13 takes us into the second cap a lot. But we could still technically, even right now, get more attack speed. Then we're going to come down through here and grab this. We grab this armor node now, too, because this, I don't know if you noticed, we've taken a couple points at a certain places to add some of this, like plus 15 armor type stuff, so that we can get our armor capped and take it off the boots, though. And also, I didn't I didn't add this, but on one of our jewelry slots, we have um, plus two fifty armor now, um, which is what a skull. Yeah, we have a skull instead of a diamond. And then we have obviously the revealing node, up to a thirty percent chance to knock down vulnerable enemies, and you deal thirty percent increased damage to crowd controlled enemies. So no matter what, we deal that extra damage to crowd controlled enemies, which is really nice. And then if we knock down the enemy, knock down a vulnerable enemy then we also get the damage from the uh, gorilla skill that I said we could afford to take a point out of. And then come up here, we have sapping. The most broken thing. I don't think they thought this through when they made this. Casting, it, no matter what, once you get your first spirit hall, every single skill you cast will be of that spirit hall. So you, no matter what, you just always have this procced. Um, anyway. Now obviously we have hubris in here. Hubris itself doesn't do anything. Dealing increased damage to vulnerable targets by 10% is 10% multiplicative damage, which is not bad. The part about it being thorns doesn't matter. It just has the highest magic nodes. That's why people use it. You get more damage getting the extra two points here um, versus using like Menagerist because you get... These end up being 15, okay? And you'll go 15 plus 15 plus 15 is what, 45, right? And then now it's what 17 that's 34 so 51 right so that's six but then for each point of resource you have your rod of does three damage so do the math on that six times three right it's 18 more damn 18 percent damage so when you do this i mean it's close enough where it doesn't really matter because what with the eagle with the uh menagerist you can do a maximum of 12. But we, you'd have to make sure that everything gets procced at the same time. So you would have to use the centipede. You would have to make sure you soar. You would have to make sure you use, or you always use your gorilla and your drag wire skill. So we have to make sure that the centipede and the eagle skill get procced with those two. And you'll deal 12% increased damage that way. But the 12 is less than 18. So you do 6% more multiplicative damage by using um, hubris. And then also, um, it needs strength, and this right here alone grants its um, bonus, which doesn't really matter, but that's interesting if there's ever a Thorns build. I know that's not, it doesn't really matter for this build, but like I, I was just thinking about that. If you ever make like a Spirit Born Thorns build, this is just the best. Anyway, making sure we grab this attack speed, this resistance to all elements. Eventually, we'll take like a point off of like here. And put it here and then add grab this resistance to all elements as well make sure we grab all this resource cost reduction over here and the obvious uh, max resource for the damage coming up through here resistance to all elements and max life this max life gives us tons of extra damage because it's what like another eight percent or something 
Um, come up through here, grab the node. I know I've been rambling a lot, guys. When I when I don't feel well, my brain just like goes even faster than normal. I don't know why. We're gonna go over to our last board. This is what we changed before. We had turf here, and I know that I said I think turf is better than outmatch, but it's just really not between the points that we get to save by using outmatch. This is not the typical board that people put it in, but if you come in through here, and also actually hold that thought. So we have, we use convergence. Somebody was telling me that Goblin Inc. has Orange Hulk, and it's for me to take a look at that, and that Infighter was better. I don't think Infighter is better. So Infighter gives you, what, 9% increased damage and up to 20% or 18% increased attack speed. But that's, on, that's contingent on you dodging a bunch of attacks. So we have this max life up here and max life here. That that build that that just doesn't have. I think it has one max life source. So let's ignore this. This gives us two, two, four. So eight percent max life right here. Um, that's going to equate to more than nine percent damage whenever you math it out. And it's not contingent on dodging. And then this attack speed here gives us two point five, two point five, two point five. So what seven and a half percent right here? which is not quite 20%, but again, it's not contingent on us dodging. So in my opinion, it's better, plus the legendary note itself, which it's the way that it's worded is actually kind of confusing. It adds damage, but how much? Who knows? Somebody mathed it out. That's not me. I'm not a mathematical genius. So we've already explained all this up here, so the only thing we got left to explain is outmatch. Um, and then all we got to do is follow this path in here, and boom. I mean, like, we only need it to hit 25 strength. Then, of course, we grab these because this is what it's boosting. It's not a huge deal because it's flat damage, but um, yeah. Look how simple it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 nodes to, to make sure that it gets grabbed. 13 if we want to count to having to go this way with it. And other than that, we would already grab this stuff anyway. But that is it. This video is a little bit longer than normal because I rambled a lot. But hope you guys like it. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all the generic YouTube stuff. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.